Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I shall be talking about five things you probably did not know that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited. Number one, Bij'atu Ahli Nar, the sleeping posture of the people of Hellfire. At Tirmizi narrates in the Sunan and Ahmad in his Musnad on the authority of Abu Huraira de la Talani who said, Ra'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulan mutpaji'an ala batnihi. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a man laying on his belly. Fakala, so he said, Inna havihi dhij'atun la yuhibbuha Allah. This is a sleeping posture that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. Similarly, Abu Dawood narrates in the Sunan on the authority of Abu Dhar al-Gifari, Allah ta'ala knew who said, Mar Rabiya Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once passed me by, Wa ana mutajun ala batni, while I was laying on my tummy. Farakadwani bi rijilihi, so he hit me lightly with his feet, waqala ya junaidib, and he called my name saying, O junaidib, innama hadhi i dhij'atu ahli nar, this is the sleeping posture of the people of hellfire. The scholars of Islam have given three different explanations to this hadith. The first is that maybe this is the sleeping posture of people that will be admitted in Jahannam on the day of judgment. So this is how they shall be sleeping. The second interpretation is that the Fujar and the Kufar, the disbelievers and the evildoers, shall be laid face down in Jahannam on their faces like this. So the sleeping pussy of the people of Hellfire in the Hadith indicate that when they are thrown into Hellfire on the Day of Judgment, this is how they shall be laid face down in Hellfire. So this is the second interpretation. The third interpretation is that the Fujar, the evildoers, the criminals of this world would love to be sleeping like this. And so the Messenger of Allah described it as the sleeping posture of the people of Hellfire. Whichever of these interpretations is the most correct one, the Muslim is advised against sleeping on his belly, whether it is during the day or at night, and whether he was just resting or he was taking uh, a nap. It is recommended for the Muslim to sleep on his right side. Number two, Ki'idatul Magbubi alayhim, the sitting posture of those on whom descends the wrath and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahmad and Abu Dawood narrated in their books on the authority of Ash-Sharid ibn Suwaid al thaqafi radiallahu ta'ala, and who said, Marra bi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ana jalisun hakadha. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa passed me by while I was sitting like this. So he mentioned how he was sitting. وَقَدْ وَضَعْتُ يَدِي الْيُسْرَ خَلْفَ ظَهْرِي I had placed my left hand at my back. وَتَكَاتُ عَلَىٰ عَلِيَةِ يَدِي So I reclined or I relied on the heels of my hand. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw me in this posture, he said to me, Ataku undu ki'idat al magbubi alayhim. Are you sitting in a posture of those with whom Allah is angry? So it is detested that a Muslim sits in a position like this. But if one wants to recline on his hands while sitting, then there is nothing wrong in reclining on both hands while sitting. So one can sit and recline on the heels of his two hands. One can also sit and recline on his right hand only. But reclining on the left hand only is detested for the Muslim. There is nothing wrong in reclining on the left elbow or on the right elbow if one intends to sit while reclining on his hands. Number three, Madlisu Shaitan, the sitting place of Shaitan. The Ashabu Sunan have narrated in their books on the authority of a companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an yujlasa bayna dhihi wa dhilli. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned from sitting in between the sun and the shade. Wa qala majlisu shaitan. 
It be described such place as the sitting place of Satan. Al Imam Ahmad and others narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira, who said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Iza kana ahadukum fil fay, If any of you were sitting in the sun, فَقَالَ صَعَنْهُ And it was taken over by the shade. Um, فَلِيَكُمْ Let him rise from the place. فَإِنَّهُ مَجْدِسُ الشَّيْطَانِ Because it is the place of sitting of the shaitan. So once the sun is taken over by the shade, not completely, in such a way that half of the place is in the sun and the other half is in the shade, then one should leave the place and move to, to where there is a complete shade. Because sitting in the sun and in the shade together, half of the body is in the sun, the other half, the other half is in the shade, is a place where shaitan loves to sit. Number four, al-ihtiba'u yawm al-jum'ati wal-imam yakhtub. Sitting in a posture known as al-ihtiba' in Arabic on the day of Jum'ah, while the khutbah is going on. Al-ihtiba' is when one sits with his feet against his hips, and his hips against his body. This kind of sitting posture, as you can see in the video, is what is called al ihtiba The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam prohibited that one should sit in this kind of position, especially on the day of Juma while the khutbah is going on. The scholars have mentioned about three different reasons why the Prophet prohibited this kind of sitting posture. Number one is that it is possible that one were not wearing a long trouser underneath for for instance some people wear jalabia and just their pants underneath and it is going to expose its aura number two is that it may also be a sort of distraction for the imam while he was giving the khutbah to be seeing that kind of um, aura of the person sitting in front of him and number three they mentioned that it is one of the easiest posture to slip off especially while the khutbah is going on so if you are fond of sitting like this on the day of Juma, where the Imam is giving the khutbah, you should refrain from it because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited such sitting posture. Number five, al-julus of turqat, sitting by the roadside. Here in Ilani, it is called assembly. People like to sit by the roadside, they call it assembly. But in Lafayette, where I come from, they call it chamber. So people like sitting in chambers, to discuss, it could be during the day, it could be in the evening, it could be at night. It is narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the companions, Iyakum wal julusa fi turqat. Beware of sitting by the roadsides. A companion said, Ya Rasulullah, ma lana min majalisina bud. We can't do without sitting by the roadsides. Natahadda fi fiha. There is nothing we do while sitting by the roadsides than to discuss among ourselves it could be about religion, it could be about social, economic life, among other things. The Prophet ﷺ said to them, فَإِذَا أَبَيْتُمْ إِلَّا الْمَجْلِسِ If you would not do away with such gatherings, فَأَعْبُدْ بَرِيْكُ حَقَّهُ Then you must give the road its due right. The companion said, وَمَا حَقُّ الطَّرِيْكِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Apostle of Allah, what is the right of the road? The Prophet ﷺ said, رَبُّ الْبَصَرِ you must lower your gaze. So whenever you are sitting by the roadside and females happen to pass by, you must lower your gaze and not look at them because it is haram for you to look at them. Number two, he said, Kaful Aza. You must refrain from speaking ill about people. So you do not backbite, you do not slander, you do not assassinate anybody's character while sitting by the roadside. During the election process, so I want you guys to work together. And I pray to Almighty Allah for you to have a successful tenor. Because, you know, in this life, to attain success in life is not how far, but how well. Talk less to them, uh, student activities of a team. You can see, uh, student of a team, you can see their own team doing the student of a team is very low. But nevertheless, you try your possible best in order to encourage them and employ them in several things to be doing. So I wish every one of you best of luck. Number three, he said, Waraddu Salam you must respond to the greetings of the passers-by while sitting by the roadside. So Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. 
So, so basically, on a normal note, we should understand the fact that... Number four, he said, an amru bil ma'ruf. You must command what is right and righteous amongst yourselves uh, while sitting by the roadside. And number five, he said, wa nahayu anil munkar. You must prohibit evil among yourselves. So, one of you or some of you should be encouraging others to do what is right, telling them why they need to worship Allah, to get closer to Him. And some of you should also be uh, telling people why it is wrong to commit acts of prohibitions like zina, drinking alcohol, gambling, among other things that Allah SWT has prohibited. So I want to advise, I'm advising you guys to be praying your the prayers, five prayers daily, uh, Mabru, Ishai, Suboi, Ashri, and Zuri. So, uh, if you are doing anything and you hear the court of Salat, then you leave whatever you are doing and go and observe your God. Go and, go and pray in the mosque. And make sure, as a meal, you have to make sure to go to the mosque to go and pray. And there's, um, we have Sunnah fasting, which is fast on Monday and Thursdays. So, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us to fast on Monday and Thursdays, us to gain more reward and to be more closer to Almighty Allah. And your tajud, you should pray your tajud, make, make the tajud your habits. It's not necessary you wake up. So, so basically, on a normal note, we should understand the fact that our education is the priority right now. If you, yes. if you don't read your books, if you are not responsible, if you don't attend classes, you should know for sure that it is going to affect the, the, the stability of your CGPA. So as fellow students, as students, make it your ability, make it, make, make it your responsibility, your doings to make your books your friend. Your books, your friends. Your books, your friends. Do everything you can to avoid distractions. Do everything you can to avoid distractions. Do everything that you can do to ensure that your book is your closest friend. Friends will come. Let's go and play ball. Let's go and do this. Let's go and do that. There is time for everything under the earth. There is time for everything that we are to do. Understand this and it will help you in boosting your CGPA. It will help you in making academic excellence. It will help you in, 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 in attaining that, that facial expressions that people want you to, add, to attain. I hope this helps. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.